If your business or nonprofit is not able to work anywhere, anytime, on any device, then your organization is working at a competitive disadvantage. Learn how to transform your business or nonprofit by embracing the modern workplace. Learn how to implement a robust collaboration system that works for your internal team and your external partners. Learn how to effectively communicate with everyone in your business. Learn how to securely put all the solutions in place without sacrificing security. If you're ready to embrace the modern workplace, then you're ready for My365 by leveraging Microsoft's SharePoint, Teams, Power Apps, and Endpoint Manager, My365 brings together a complete cloud solution. My365 provides collaboration, communication, automation, and security in one simple, fast, and scalable solution. So, if you're ready to embrace the modern workplace, contact the team at IT Pros Management for more information. And remember, with IT Pros Management, you can relax. IT is covered. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining uh, today. I'm Randy Martinez from IT Pros Management. Uh, we wanted to basically start off here by kind of presenting that video I just showed you which really looks at what the My365 platform is really all about. It kind of gives you a big picture item of all the different elements that make up uh, one total solution on a platform that uh, we leverage the Microsoft environment with. Um, in today's uh, demo, basically, uh, Q&A session, we've got David Swenson from uh, NetLogic Computer. David, uh, want to introduce yourself here? Hey, everybody, how's it going? Great to be with you again. Uh, looking forward to showing you all that a My365 managed desktop has to offer, and we can deep dive into any features that people might have specific questions on. Great, thanks a lot, David. So we will be covering a few slides, uh, bringing up some information that we covered. We had a webinar uh, last month, basically, to kind of give a big overall picture of the program. This one is really going to be more focused on looking at the actual platform and the way the solution can actually be deployed in your business, in your nonprofit organization, and really be able to bring the product into your environment as a complete solution, not just a piecemeal of one app or another app, but as a total overall platform that we have designed uh, and worked with uh, David's team to put together. And we really wanna make sure that we give enough time to show the product. And then if anybody has any questions, definitely, uh, get those out there. If you have a question, you can feel free to uh, basically raise your hand, or if you want to put it in the chat, we will uh, answer your questions regarding the solution, the, any questions you may have. And at the end of the webinar, we have a an offer that we put out that I want to make sure everybody sticks to, uh, sticks to the end, basically, to get that offer. It's something that we feel is of great value and will kind of move you to the next step if you're thinking about uh, implementing these solutions in your organization. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and just pop up my first slide here. Give me one moment. Okay, can everybody, David, could you see the slide? Looks great, Randy. All right, perfect, thanks a lot, sir. So basically, uh, we are looking at My365 as a solution. So we basically want to make sure that our current environment, potentially for most people, looks like this. In today's world, uh, and especially after COVID, during COVID, uh, everybody scattered to the winds, as they say, when it came to a work environment. So people were using whatever devices, equipment they had to be able to do their work if they didn't have any kind of plan to basically produce a remote modern workforce. We were forced to do it uh, because of COVID. Um, a lot of companies adapted to it. A lot of companies uh, accepted that and actually became a business model, which in nowadays we call it the modern workplace where workers are basically still using devices like this. But through the My365 solution, we really want to make it look like this, where even if they're using all these various devices, it's still under one single umbrella, one single entity controlling everything, a platform where everything can be done and it doesn't need to be 
um, scattered all over the place with no controls, no management, no security. Uh, the Mitre 65 solution brings that into play. David, do you want to kind of add anything to this? Yeah, I, I think when we really set out to look at, you know, how modern work was starting to shape within business and within the enterprise and really whatever industry that you're in, uh, the biggest challenge was a lot of service providers and, and IT providers or even IT departments were looking at the tech that was right in front of them. And what we learned very quickly after working with multiple customers in different verticals was it, it's not just about the specific piece of equipment that the company issues to them. We have to think about their their smartphone. We have to think about their wearable. We have to think sometimes about you know smart lighting, depending on the business that you're in. And we need a platform that allows us to continue to embrace these smart tools because we know they're not going away, but we also need a platform that because we know we have to embrace all these things that we're not going to outgrow as, as business owners and as uh, uh, productive uh, people in, in, in today's modern workplace. So that's, that's really why we, we set out to build this platform, Randy. Perfect. Thanks a lot, David. I appreciate that. So really, the, what is that modern workplace vision that we talk about, that we look at? It's basically the ability, and we kind of put it together in a very concise way. I think probably sentence that really says it all is basically being able to work anywhere, anytime on any device. We eliminate the constraints of the old model, the old enterprise model where everything was in the office. You had to either VPN in, remote desktop in to do things, to get things done. And as we found out during COVID, those solutions were A, not practical, B, not very secure and not very reliable. So that's where the, I guess, the genesis of the solution, this platform is leveraging the investment that Microsoft has made into all these products, which is in the millions and millions of dollars, if not the billions uh, of amounts of money that have been invested in these platforms. But not only having those platforms available to you, but be able to put them all together so that they work as a unifying system, not a scattered system where you have one application doing one thing, something else doing over here, and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. I like to look at it that way. And we wanna make sure that this Microsoft 365 solution really brings in all those pieces and we basically do it for you. We build that system for you completely using all the tools that you may have heard of, maybe using here and there, but we put it all together for you so you actually have a platform that's cloud-based, that's secure, that's robust, that allows for communication, for collaboration and automation and the most important part, security. So the first thing we want to look at is productivity, being productive. And these are some of the tools that we put together uh, to give your team, your company, your organization, your enterprise, the ability to be productive. SharePoint, which is an incredible platform that has supplanted many of the old file servers that we all maybe grew up with using uh, in our businesses, has completely supplanted those. Uh, but we actually take that SharePoint site and bump it up. We make it much more than just a document storage area. And David is going to show you what that looks like here in a moment. We add these different pieces to a SharePoint site to make it more of a robust uh, uh, workplace intranet, a uh, workplace dashboard where you can go to one single page and be able to start your work environment or your work journey from that single page, either going to a document, going to a website, a training video, a calendar item, those particular items, we we designed this to work in that fashion all on a single SharePoint page. So David, if you could uh, take over and give us a little example of that, that'd be great. Sorry about that. I was <laughs> no talking problem, and didn't realize I was on mute. All right, so let me uh, start off here by sharing an example of a, a Windows desktop that is joined to the whole Microsoft 365 environment. And then I'm really going to, to sort of paint a picture with a flow chart here of what a, a Viva landing site is and how it interconnects. But I just wanna show you quickly from the end user perspective is we're not introducing any new tools that your team has to get familiar with. They simply open their browser, whether they're using Edge, they're using Chrome, um, they'll be able to do it just the same. And when you open up that browser, you're presented with your organization's homepage that's dubbed Viva Landing. And on the Viva Landing, everybody inside your company has access to this. This is something that essentially springboards you into all the tools and resources you might need to fulfill your day-to-day -day workflow. For example, quick virtual office tools, you know, getting to your email and calendar and Outlook, 
uh, opening up and working inside Microsoft Teams for chat and communication, uh, analyzing your workflow habits. You know, how long am I spending in, in, in meetings? Am I working after hours? Things like that. And of course, getting quick access to training and, and, and fundamental learning for the services that you're working in every day. Maybe you want to know more about how to create pivot tables in Excel. Maybe you want to know how to create a new SharePoint site of your own. All that can be explored right through here. Moving on down, we look at things like an organization wide calendar. So this is a page that everybody gets access to. This, for example, is a place where you could say, OK, this is a company holiday or maybe somebody's on call or uh, who, who knows what it might be. Any type of event, whether it's in person or virtual, is something that you can place right inside this page through a group calendar. And remember, because the system is so interconnected, all of these things don't just exist on this one page. It will also coexist throughout your workflow inside Microsoft 365. And what do I mean by that? I mean that when you look at your phone and you reference your calendar, it's going to reflect these events that you're a part of. When you're looking at uh, uh, a friend's computer and you're using a web browser because you need to access your email, all of this data will, will, will sync and, and, and move along with you no matter where you are. And that's what Randy was really talking about, about bringing this virtual office with you every single place that you go. If I look here, I've got a couple of team sites up at the top too. So let's say, for example, I want to go into what the sales and marketing department is doing. And now I'm brought into a page that is just uniquely made for the sales and marketing team. And the only people that can actually see this content are people that have been added as sales and marketing members. Now, to take it a step further, not only do I have my documents on my actual page, where this is where we were talking about having that file share and sharing documents, and this would take the place of those legacy network drives that you would have, or maybe those drop boxes that you already have or have used before. But if I look at this here, let me make this window a little bit smaller because we're talking about integrating your whole ecosystem, right? So your files shouldn't just be available online. They should also be available from your traditional uh, points of entry, like File Explorer on a PC or Finder on a Mac device. So if I go into my company name here, I'll notice that in File Explorer, I have this same drive available in real time, whether I'm on my PC, my Mac, or I'm in my web browser, or even using my mobile phone. So everything that happens over here is going to happen over here in real time. So Randy, I want to pause for a minute, but I, I do have a diagram that I can absolutely show about how all these things interconnect. Uh, just let me know where you'd like to go next. Yeah, I'd love to see that diagram because I, I know which one you're talking about, and I think that does give a very good representation. Do you want to pull that up? That'd be great. Yeah. And this one is specifically focusing around um, the, the landing site in particular, all the stuff that we were just walking through. So with this here, this is really trying to illustrate, and, and, and let me know if that's big enough, Randy. I'm not sure if I need to make it a little bit larger or not. Um, but what this is really trying to illustrate here is, okay, if I have a licensed user inside my company, meaning a user account that I've set up, I've given them a Microsoft license, they have an email address in my company, they're one of my team members. They're going to have their personal OneDrive storage, right? Which is their 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 uh, one terabyte of space that they can put their desktop, their documents, their pictures, and anything that's unique to them throughout the company. But they're also going to be connected to that Viva Landing Hub site that I was just showing you on screen. And through that Viva Landing Hub site, I showed you one department. So we looked at the sales and marketing department, right? And in this example, I actually have those two split out. These sites here are all going to include a file share and a team. So you can have your meetings, your calls, your chats, your, your task management lists, your documents and your collaboration. Doesn't matter if they're Microsoft documents, PDFs, it I, does not matter what the format is, even CAD files will work in here. And of course, they're gonna have their own dashboard. And notice how all of these are marked internal only, right? So these are internal only sites, only people within the company and that have been implicitly added to these groups can get access to these individual items. And then we move over and we see that we have the ability to bring in guest users as well. So we can bring in people from outside the company, people with personal email addresses, AOL emails, Google Gmails, you know, it doesn't really matter what they are and they don't have to have a license. And we can then start to share content 
on this external group that they'll be able to join and interact with, just like they're a member of your own organization, but you'll be able to keep tabs on who those guests are, when those guests are. And Randy, as you know, there, there are so many use cases for bringing in external users into the whole virtual office mix. But for those of you that are wondering, how do I share with people outside my immediate company? Maybe they're customers, maybe they're vendors, maybe they're their legal counsel, who knows what it might be this is how you would basically set that that whole uh, uh, situation up. Any thoughts on, on that, Randy? No, that's great because that's actually a very uh, good case use that we've actually implemented for other clients where we've set up an internal uh, SharePoint environment and then have turned around once they've gotten used to it and using it, then those uh, creative juices start flowing and we get requests, hey, can we set up one of these for an external uh, we have several law firms that we support and uh, they work with outside counsel, but they don't want to give them access to their entire site sites. We set up these external sites that look exactly the same, but they are they maintain that segregation to those walls between internal and external. And they have been such a fantastic way to collaborate with people outside of your organization while not sacrificing security or any of the standard stuff. Exactly. And, and I think one real unique part of the whole Microsoft 365 ecosystem, even with the the the, the standard or 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 what I would call the, the the business premium license, right, which is one of the most affordable entry points for for modern IT infrastructure because it's part of your office licensing. It, it, what I, what I like to say to to people that are wondering about security and compliance is every single person that follows one of these lines, both back and forth. Everything that happens in your network is completely auditable and traceable. So that's where IT pros comes in and would be able to say, oh, OK, you know, I want to know if my assistant or if, if my team member went in and changed something on marketing or edited a file or, or sent something out to the external share site. So all of that is, is part of what we work with you on in, in further developing your compliance posture and rules that should exist within your own organization to make sure that your data stays safe. Exactly. Great. Great point. Thank you, David. I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the next section here. Let me bring up my PowerPoint. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. So we've looked at what a kind of a SharePoint site looks like. So I guess the next thing is kind of looking at the, the one piece that we talk about when we're looking at communication when it comes to the My365 solution. Communication is important, obviously, in any organizations. And how do we do that with the solution to basically give us a single point of communication? That is through the uh, Microsoft Teams environment. So Microsoft Teams basically, again, is part of your business premium licensing that David mentioned that comes along with it. So again, you're not having to go out and get a third party communication tool. It's all integrated. And the great thing about it, when I say integrated, I mean integrated into where your documents are, integrated to your communication, integrated into your security. So it's all coming together. And we have clients uh, ourselves, basically. I know David, his team, our team internally, we live in Microsoft Teams. We do a, that's kind of where we start our day. And for Microsoft Teams, uh, it's almost like an octopus where it's able to connect to everything else. And you're just working in Teams, whether you're making a call, a chat, you're basically communicating uh, and accessing data, you're all doing it from Microsoft Teams. So the Teams platform really gives you the ability to communicate calls, video calls, chats, um, we have actually in our organization, I know predominantly in, in on David's side of the house as well, uh, we use Microsoft Teams extensively internally. We do not email ourselves anymore, pretty much internally. Internally, our communication method is Teams because it's faster, quicker, quicker response, and you're not um, bogged down by an email system that, you know, if you have to send an email out, it has to go through a process where working in teams, it's pretty much that instant gratification that you would get from sending a message to somebody and they sending a message back. So with that, David, I want to kind of maybe have you show what teams looks like uh, in the scope of my 365. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and I'll take us right back uh, to where we were inside of our demo here. So we were looking at our files and, and Randy was talking a lot about integration, right? There's integration with your file structure, integration with everything. So Teams in itself is really designed to be that great aggregator for everything that happens inside Microsoft 365 while unifying all of your functions with calling and chat, right? That's that's what it's really designed to do. And oftentimes people would compare Microsoft Teams to a tool like Slack or like Zoom or something like that. 
Now, what's interesting about tools like Slack and Zoom is, yes, they do have, you know, Slack, do, uh, Slack does communication, collaboration, file sharing very well. But then it's sort of missing that meeting component. So you have to go out and get Zoom, right? And then Zoom does the meeting part really well. But when it comes to file sharing and collaboration, you're really just relying on the tools that you're, again, already paying for or then have to layer on top. Whereas with Teams, let's take a look at how this works. So inside of Teams, and I'm just looking on this, this one section here, Teams are interconnected and pre-set up for me based on my entire structure within my company. Remember that flow chart that I was showing you before with the sales and the marketing and the HR site and all that. So notice how up here in Teams, we actually have a team that is the same name and look and feel and iconography of the SharePoint site we were just on. So sales and marketing has a team. And if I see underneath this team, there are what we call channels. And channels, for those of you that have used Slack before or something like it, you're familiar with this. These are basically the sub uh, subtopics within a channel or a group uh, uh, where conversations and files happen. But if, for example, I look here, I could see that there are channels for every folder that exists over here. And remember, that's not just limited to my, my online or my teams. I can also look at it and say, oh, general channel, general folder, general folder. So if I go into the general channel within Teams and click files up at the top, I should expect to see the same content here. And of course I picked an empty folder. So let's go into monthly reports and go to files. I should expect to see the same thing in monthly reports here that I see in monthly reports over here and that I see in monthly reports over here on my computer. And we could see that all of these things are literally the exact same directory happening at the exact same time. So this is where that synchronization really comes into play. Everything stays in one place, keep track of your files, keep track of your data, and you know who's at, who has access to what at, at any given time. Um, Brandy, I don't know if you want to go too much into the chat and collaboration features. I'm sure we could spend you know an hour just on Teams itself, but there is, of Absolutely. course, a lot inside of here. Yeah, we could just take a look at really quick the chat feature and the probably the the meeting function feature, the calendar. Yeah, I think that absolutely. Would be helpful. So let's look at some of the things that are that are unique to Teams when it comes to the Microsoft 365. And let me minimize the rest of this that I have going on now that we've sort of explained the relationships between Teams here. So when I'm in Teams, if I continue on in this monthly reports channel under sales and marketing. The reason I could see the sales and marketing team here in my teams is because I've been added as a member or I'm the one that's created the team, right? So I get access to stuff that's in there. Within here, I can choose to create a new conversation under the posts tab within the channel. You'll notice that there are a bunch of channels up top and you can add your own tabs to these channels too. These tabs can be anything you would uh, you would like. They could be YouTube videos, they could be websites, they could be reports, they could be add-ins, they could be Zoom meetings, you know, anything you want to bring in here. Uh, Adobe content can be brought in as a tab. But under posts is where all the conversations are happening. And if I go to head to reply, I can reply to something that Prandeep already had said here uh, uh, to, to our staff. And I could choose to like, I could choose to love, I could give all that type of stuff. I could even use things like rich text editing. So if I wanted to insert a table or format paragraphs or insert rich links, I could do all that stuff here. Now, if I'm not coming in to, re to uh, uh, make a reply, I could also choose to create a new conversation. And notice I have those same controls here that I had when I was making a reply. So I could start a new thread or I could continue on with an existing thread right inside of Teams. The other part here is your calendar. So managing your calendar is going to be very much like it is an Outlook. So your calendar inside of Teams is just going to be a direct reflection of your calendar inside Outlook. The two are one and the same. What's different inside Microsoft Teams is, of course, everything in here is going to be themed by joining meetings or getting into those calling sessions, right? So if I go ahead and hit new meeting, it's going to automatically create a Teams meeting link for me, and I don't have to worry about that. So it's assuming because I'm creating it inside Microsoft Teams, this is going to be my meeting title. I'm going to add my participants. I can choose who to make optional, who to make required, what the date and time is. Um, all those things are available right from here. I also have the option 
to choose, you know, do I want people to to have to respond to this meeting? Do I want them to be able to forward it to somebody else? And do I want to set up a registration form for people in this meeting? So if I wanted to have people actually register for like a webinar, this is where I can come in and then create a registration form to allow people to get tracked and entry and, 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 and tickets and all, all that kind of stuff. However, I wanted to set that up. So there's a lot of features and functions in here, which is why Randy will we'll probably do a follow up and I'm sure people will have questions on how to work with teams individually. Uh, but there's definitely a lot that comes into play. And also notice what I want to finish up with. Not only do we have teams and calendar, but we also have our Viva system, right? So right from teams, we get access to that same SharePoint virtual office and Viva landing page that we were using before. So whether you want to have your people working on desktops with multiple applications or have them working right out of Microsoft Teams the whole time to use their files and their Office applications, that's entirely possible because the full Office suite is built right inside of Teams. Great, thanks a lot, David. Yes, so Teams, as you folks can see, it's uh, it's it's a monster. It's a, it has its reach into every piece of the MITRE 65 solution, the Microsoft ecosystem, and Microsoft Teams is actually becoming adopted, you know, worldwide as a, the communication platform of choice for a lot of organizations, a lot of businesses. Um, it's giving Zoom even a voice communication. If you're talking about a Ring Central, Nextiva voice over IP solution, you could actually get implement that within um, Microsoft Teams. David, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So there is a there is a section here that we didn't go into. Um, I don't have the particular demo set up on on this instance, but if I, I wanted to, I could actually replace or migrate my entire uh, phone system over to Microsoft Teams and then have all of that happening within one application. So if I had the appropriate licensing, there would actually be a phone dial pad that would show up right here that has all of my dial numbers. I would have a phone number assigned, a direct dial, and this would essentially become my desk phone. And any Bluetooth headset or wired headset that's plugged into my device, that would be my receiver. If I wanted something else, I could also get a desk phone that supports Microsoft Teams. And, and there are hundreds and hundreds of different models from the major players out there like Polycom and, 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 and all those different handsets that manufacture them. But what Teams is ultimately trying to do is, is aggregate anything that might happen in a first line or even back of house workers workflow throughout that day. And notice how I have the option to get my voicemail. I would be able to transfer calls. I could forward calls to people within my team. You know, all of that is built in as well. Yeah, we're seeing an incredible adoption into the Microsoft Teams uh, for that particular purpose of actually voice communication, voice calling, getting that license. It typically tends to be uh, less expensive than getting a third party um, voice provider. And just by adding the license to your existing business premium, you get what like David mentioned, dial tone, uh, auto attendance, all these things that you typically would see in a standard voice uh, over IP system, uh, PBX type of system for your voice communication phones, you would get that in here. So let's jump back here. I'm gonna pull up uh, the presentation and just go on to the next section here that we can cover. Give me one moment. So we've talked about SharePoint, kind of the Viva landing site, that, that landing point where you start your journey. We've talked about Teams and how that can help with communication and collaboration. Um, the next piece to looking at is the automation part of what My365 kind of brings to the table. And these are the various apps that uh, basically are used. They're called Power Apps, basically, because they combine different entities, Power BI, which is Power Business Intelligence, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents, which is uh, one of the newer features. So these um, applications that are part of the Microsoft ecosystem can be brought to bear to assist with creating automation workflows and actually being able to provide uh, business intelligence uh, for a business that's gathering data, but they've got the data basically all over the place. And when you have data scattered, you really don't know what to do with it. You've got the data, but what do you do with it? How it becomes meaningful for you? And what these tools do, especially Power BI, would be able to give it to you in a way that you can digest it, that you can present it to your leadership, to your management, to investors, to your team. So all the data that you may be capturing on spreadsheets, on lists, we can take them and put them together and be able to provide you a meaningful way to visually represent that information to your 
to the folks, to the masses, basically. So, David, um, can you kind of shed a little bit more information on these? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Power Platform is something that's really unique to Microsoft 365. And what Power Platform is all about is really making data into a storytelling, right? So, so how do you how do you tell a story with data? How do you make data more accessible? Because what Randy and I have been talking about through this webinar series is yes, we're going to give you cool tools, we're going to give you cool applications, updates, all that fun stuff. But what we're really talking about is building conduits to your data, right? Making your data more accessible. And the Power Power Platform is that next tier in the modern workplace that says, okay, with Power BI, I don't want to just have an Excel spreadsheet. I need to be able to create dynamic charts. I need the data to be digested for me, and I want the computer to tell me a story. So if I have a table of you know, event registrations, I want graphs to be shown to me on what types of tables were booked. Did they book a hotel room? What was the cost of that hotel room? And I want the system to essentially real-time digest it and paint me a picture. Power Apps can now say, well, with that registration data, maybe I want my hotel guests or, 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 or my event guests to be able to log into a portal and update their data, right? I want to give them a nice form-based user interface where they can log in with their account and, and there's a little application. Or maybe I'm an organization that owns a trucking company, right? And I, I have people out in the field and they have to check in and out goods when it onboards to their truck and they want to be able to snap a picture with their phone's camera and send that data immediately back rather than doing paperwork. That's where Power Apps comes into play is we would build those applications and build those, user, uh, those, those actual user interfaces. Then with Power Automate, we talk about if this, then that, right? Our workflows. Well, I talked just with Power BI and with Power Apps about making your data visualized and, of course, building user interfaces for your data. But Power Automate is the mechanism of this that says, OK, now if somebody registers for the event and they booked hotel room block A, section B, room number 239, then they should get the email confirmation that looks like this. But if they booked section B, row two or whatever it might be, they should get the email confirmation that looks like this. And then the receipt should be sent to my back office automatically. So that's where Power Automate comes in, and it's our workflow creator. Power Virtual Agents, like Randy said, it's one of the newer members of the family. And this is where if you were to have a, a public-facing website, maybe you have itprosmanagement.com, right? And you wanted to have a chat bot. Maybe somebody comes in and they say, you know, customer service or I need to chat for help. You can now integrate all of the same data that we've been talking about and your chat bot can now be on your website to answer questions about that person's hotel room reservation that signed up for your event. And all four of these mechanisms are working in tandem and pretty much all of them are included in your licensing out of the box. Perfect, thanks a lot, David. So yeah, so these base, these applications or these uh, services that are available within the Microsoft uh, ecosystem are something that we as an organization leverage a lot for our clients where we are actually building out very customizable workflows, customizable dashboards to be able to, for them again to aggregate the data that they're collecting, whether they're filling out a form like David said, and then that data is being stored on a list and then we're using a Power BI um, interface to be able to look at that data and say, okay, what is the information that it, we're trying to convey? Power BI handles that. Power Apps gives you that ability, again, to build out these applications that you need. The Power Automate platform then gives you the ability to uh, really automate workflows. So things that are redundant, tasks that are basically repetitive, why pay somebody X amount of money to do that repetitive task when you can automate it and then use that resource for something more complicated, much more personal that needs that personal touch? The automation and the uh, the tools that are provided within the Power Platform are what uh, gives us the ability to provide that automation within that grand scheme of things of saying collaboration, communication, and now the automation. Uh, any other words of wisdom around the, these topics, uh, David? I, I would just say, because I always leave this out, legacy data, right? We all have legacy data and legacy systems that we'll want to come over from. Randy, you and I are actually working on a project right now regarding getting information into a CRM, right? And right. and and the, the beauty is Power Automate in this Power Platform is not just to use, not, not to be used just for building new experiences, but also let's say you're in the position of going, oh, wow, you know, all this sounds great. I would love to get all of my data into this flexible dynamic system. How do I, how do I make that work? 
the easiest way, guys, is just to take your data, put it into Excel spreadsheet exports, and then we leverage a tool like Power Automate to go in and grab that Excel data and pull it right into your new system. So if you're wondering, hey, you know, how, this all sounds great, but how do I start getting on board with this? How do I start bringing data in? We're not going to be asking you to work with any platforms that you're not familiar with already. Great. Thanks a lot, David. So now we've looked at collaboration, communication, automation to an extent. Let's look at security. And uh, kind of the first thing we want to look at is we definitely want to stay secure. That's kind of important in today's world, not only from uh, the standpoint of it's something you need to do as a business owner, as a leader in your organization, but you need to do it basically if you are required by law, by compliance, by regulations. Uh, not only that, but we see in this, and I've been doing these uh, the last month or so, I've been getting a lot of insurance forms from our clients. And in these uh, cyber insurance policies, a lot of the information that uh, carriers are now requesting compared to five years ago, where you used to get a cyber insurance policy and they would ask you three questions. Do you have a firewall? Yes. Do you have antivirus? Yes. Uh, do you use passwords? Yes. That was it. That was Five years ago, that was an insurance policy cyber. Now it's three, four pages just on IT. And out of those three or four pages, the bulk of it is around security, uh, multi-factor authentication, uh, encryption, um, password setting, you know, uh, password management. So all these pieces that come into play um, within the Microsoft 365 solution, there is, again, a solution within this ecosystem to be able to provide that. And one thing we're going to cover right now, basically, is something that um, I really like, and, and I think a lot of our customers have really adopted, is what's called sensitivity labels. This is one piece of a, a lot of many other pieces when it comes to security. But sensitivity labels is basically what uh, a lot of folks consider encryption, but it's much more than that. And I'll let uh, David kind of speak a little bit about this right now. Perfect, yeah, so so sensitivity labels are something that, that are really flexible and a very easy way to be able to enforce uh, security and compliance across all of your data. There are, are four tiers that we look at to, to govern when we talk about security, and it's very important to preface with those. Those are identity, right? So, so your users' accounts, their account activity, if they're signing in from the correct locations, if they're signing in at odd hours that you've never seen them in before. So that's that's your identity, right? And then there's uh, devices, which we want to make sure your devices are secure, antivirus, anti-malware, all that kind of stuff. And then there's the application category. Those are, are the apps that you've installed and you're using, whether they're in the cloud or their desktop applications or their phone applications, are they safe? Do they have a good reputation? The last piece that, that, that we're, we're, we're looking at is data. And, and data is what sensitivity labels are all about. So is information in your organization that contains things like credit card numbers, social security numbers, dates of birth, full addresses, full names, you know, depending on the region you're in, as Randy was saying, certain things are considered personally identifiable information and certain things are not. But what these sensitivity labels allow us to do is say, hey, whether I'm in Word, whether I'm in Excel, whether I'm in PowerPoint, whether I'm online, whether I'm on my phone, or even if I'm in Adobe or something like that, let me see these labels. And these are my choices to use when authoring or working with a document. Now, if we look at the first label, we have public, right? So public label that you'll see is, you know, I don't care what this is. This is we're making lunch plans. I don't care who sees it. Anybody can get access to this. Private, however, is to be used when you want the, the end users to have to be authenticated before they access the data. Again, whether that's an email or a group or a chat or an Excel document, it doesn't matter what that is. It's a universally applicable uh, uh, concept. So with private, that end user will get an email or they'll get the link and they'll either have to be a guest that you've already added to your company with their personal email, or they can choose to authenticate via a one-time passcode. So if you've ever uh, done the thing where you've logged into your bank and they need to send you a code and then you put the code into the computer, that's essentially what we're talking about here in a very similar experience and that will let them in. But that gives you the, the, the information on who accessed it, when they accessed it, why they accessed it, and how long they accessed it for, and did they do anything with that data while they were accessing it? So you'll have a purview into all of that. The last label on here is protect read only, and that one's to be used mainly with files and emails. 
Um, you won't really see this on groups, but this is for files and emails that you want to send out that should be read only. End users that receive this information will not be able to forward it out. They can't print it and, and all that type of stuff. So insurance, uh, uh, legal, healthcare information, you know, for your eyes only stuff, you can apply that protect read only information. And these labels basically are very customizable. So again, we're giving you an example of some of the standard ones. When we roll out these labels, we kind of use this model, uh, but they can be customized. You can add additional ones. Uh, we yep. usually start with three or four in the environment, and then from there we can move up and really get very uh, sensitive depending on the department's needs. Maybe a finance department has more sensitive, obviously more sensitive information than maybe a marketing department does. So we can accommodate for not only um, an entire organization, but we can actually accommodate uh, labels for specific groups of people within the organization so that we're not, we're still keeping things secure, but we're not implementing security that maybe a finance department requires on to a marketing department, which would be a little bit less security uh, when it comes to that. So it's a very customizable, very uh, much so an environment where you can create and design it as you go along, but we give you the, the foundation to start with by providing the labels uh, that you see here. Uh, David, anything else we want to cover or can you show an example of these in the demo? Yeah, absolutely. So let me go ahead and pull up my, my screen share here for a minute and I want to open up my Outlook. So here I am inside of Outlook and I'm going to do something very common, which is send a new email. And in my new email, you know, I can put the the two and all that stuff uh, here. So I'll send it to the to the demo Gmail and I'll say here is the data you need. And I'll just put some random text inside of here and then I'll even attach a file from my computer. So I'll say I want this. I want uh, documents. Let's see, I'll put this demo document in here. Now from here, when I go ahead to send that email, I can actually come down here and say, oh, here are my labels. Now this is private and sensitive. I wanna make sure that the end user has to authenticate. So I'm gonna apply that private label. And you'll notice when I did that, a little uh, uh, info uh, option came up at the top here, letting me know that this is gonna be classified as private and what that really means. If I had any questions about this too at any point in time, I can always hit the learn more option under the sensitivity label features, and it's going to give me a whole training on how to utilize labels and what they're intended to do. And notice how you can switch between platform here too. So whether you're working on your PC, on your Mac, on your Android, on your iPhone or iPad, or even on the web, this is going to be a consistent process. So let's go ahead and click send on this email. And that was just telling me, hey, you applied a private label to this. That means that the document you're going to send out is going to have that label as well. So now let's go ahead and pull up our Gmail. All right. So now if I go into my Gmail inbox, here's the data I need. Notice how the email comes through looking a little bit different. I have to actually say, read the message because it's a protected file. So I want to be able to transact with, with the person that sent it to me in that secured fashion, and I don't want to break that security. So when I'm in here, I now have the ability to say, do I want to sign in with my Google account or one-time passcode? Now, I'm just going to show you the one-time passcode method because you might be dealing with people that don't have a Gmail account. So notice how it says, okay, we just sent a one-time passcode. Let's go back to my email. Here's my code. Let me copy this and put that over here. Oops, my copy didn't work. Copy. Paste. And notice how I have the option, even if I'm using a one-time passcode, to elect to stay signed in for another 12 hours. So if I get a reply or if I get another email from this organization, I won't have to go through this again for at least for another 12 hours. So now that I hit continue, it brings it up and notice how I'm working. Even though I'm a Gmail user, I'm working in sort of this little Outlook interface, right? So I'm now able to reply with this encryption applied. I can open the document, I can download it right from here, and I can see the body of my email. And that is how encryption works outside the organization. And of course, internally, uh, your people would just have single sign-on. They wouldn't have to go through any type of authentication.
Perfect. Thanks a lot, David, for that example. I'm glad we were able to see kind of the entire process, how those sensitivity labels are applied, sent, and what it looks like from the receiver's end uh, outside of the organization, what that uh, method looks like and what that procedure looks like. Thank you very yeah. much for that. Absolutely. Let's jump, uh, jump back here to our presentation. And we've got a f about 15 minutes left uh, here. I'm going to cover a couple more things, and then we're just going to open it up for Q&A and, and open it up for any questions specifically. So the one thing we want to look at is something we didn't get a chance to do in our last presentation is really look at what the browser experience looks like in the My365 solution. So basically, Microsoft Edge is that browser of choice when it comes to uh, the My365 solution. It allows for several pieces of integration. So we can do certain things like profiles that are synced. You can switch between multiple profiles. Uh, I know for us in the IT industry, switching between profiles is critical. Um, for some folks that are handling or have more, wear them more than one hat in their environment, being able to switch profiles in their browser so that they get the right information at the right time is important. Uh, enterprise grade PDF support. So basically you can open up PDF documents right from the browser uh, and it's equivalent to what you would get in a normal, let's say Ac Adobe Acrobat experience uh, with those PDF documents. You can collect and organize web data and basically be able to really look at and collect the content that you're used to working with. So instead of having multiple sites all over the place, multiple tabs or favorites, you can bring all that data, rich data together for yourself in one single location. And there's a lot of productivity tools built in. Obviously, Microsoft Office works within these browsers, uh, Outlook, uh, Microsoft Editor. So all these are pieces that can be put together to work in that browser experience. And again, it kind of comes into the idea that we talked about at the beginning of our presentation of being able to work anywhere, anytime on any device. So even if you're running a Chromebook device, if your entire infrastructure is built around uh, the um, the ecosystem of having a browser-based system running on the browser specifically, you can get pretty much everything that you need done right from within that environment without having to have native Office applications. So your cost or your, of entry going into this, you don't need a full-blown laptop. If you're working with frontline workers, you could provide them even a tablet, which is you know a couple hundred dollars, and would be able to provide them the entire work environment that they would need right from that Microsoft Edge browser. Uh, David, you want to bring up some more additional information on this? Yeah, what I really love about uh, the Microsoft Edge 2 is, and it's not really mentioned in this slideshow, but it's one of the newer uh, advantages, is the performance features too. What we've seen in using Microsoft Edge, and, and I really wanted to put this stuff to the test to see if their claims were true, um, it runs all the same stuff Chrome does, right? It essentially is Chrome, but built for the enterprise. And especially for first-line workers and people out there, whether you're on your phone, your tablet, or your laptop, battery life is really important. And what we've noticed is, Browsers can be real resource hogs when it comes to using battery life and utilization. And what they tend to do is heat up your laptop. So what we wanted to do is find a way to enable Microsoft Edge to be more smart on your system's resources. And what you'll now see is Edge on average uses 40 to 60% less resources than all the other mainstream browsers out there, including things like Google Chrome and Firefox, which means same level of functionality, better security, better integration, no need to keep signing on to different websites, and your people can continue to work all day no matter where they might end up. Perfect, thanks a lot, David. So as you can see, everybody, we've basically covered kind of the main topics that we wanted to look at. We wanted to look at how we can collaborate, how can we communicate, how can we automate in a secure fashion. So we've touched on all those points, and all those points have been touched specifically by different solutions that are within the Microsoft ecosystem, the Microsoft environment. It's just that they're out there and uh, it's hard pressed to find you know, an organization that can take all these pieces and put them together to work seamlessly to provide you a complete holistic solution to run your business, your nonprofit, stay compliant, stay secure, uh, but as well as give people the opportunity to uh, to share information, to communicate with each other and collaborate in a consistent fashion. So we really, really enjoy uh, working with these products because we find them to be not only great for our businesses, you know, running them internally, but when we apply them to outside organizations, to businesses that may still be running 
back what I call the 1990s technology, still have a bunch of servers all over the place and, and they're not secure and they're not updated and they're not patched and nobody knows how to manage them. All those pieces kind of go away when you're able to start implementing these solutions in a meaningful way, in a systematic way. It's not like we're going to come and rip everything out and put everything in brand new with a snap of a finger. No, there is a process for this, but we have done it so much that the process for us, it's almost like breathing. We know the things we have to do to make sure we keep the business going, but we move the business into an environment where the My365 platform becomes uh, an integral part of that business's uh, solutions, uh, productivity tools, security tools, and in a way that it can be managed all from one centralized portal. Uh, David, any other words of wisdom on kind of how putting all this together in one single uh, environment can really help an organization? I think overall, you know, it's what, what I've noticed just from using it and working in the systems for years is it's designed to increase your productivity. And that's not just become a marketing tagline. It really is going to simplify where you find your information, how quickly it takes you to get to the correct information for the topic that you may be working on, and the ability to get to that information at any time of the day from any location, even in the palm of your hand. That to me was the most important thing running my business, and that's why we did it ourselves. And I really look forward to doing that with all of you guys in your own businesses as well. Great. Thanks a lot for that, David. So with that, I wanted to see if anybody has any questions that they want to pop up. Feel free to, to uh, unmute your mic and just ask or to drop it into chat. Um, we really want to make sure we answer any questions that may be lingering in your mind after our presentation or if any information you'd like to have us share with you. Don't see anything, so great. So yep. the one thing we wanted to basically kind of up with at this point is we wanted to show you this particular offer that we are offering. This is a way for us to kind of allow you to try this out. Again, this is not something that's chargeable, that's you know fee-based. We honestly want to try to get as many businesses to try out at least a basic SharePoint site that we would build for you, whether you have an existing Microsoft tenancy or whether you need one, we would spin one up for you. You know, again, it's all free of cost, no licensing cost. The licenses Microsoft allows for trial licenses for 30 days. So we could spin the one up for you, set up a nice SharePoint site for you to start looking at for your business, for your nonprofit, uh, for your educational organizations, whatever you're working with, where you think this solution would help. The starting off point would be just building out a SharePoint site. That's kind of the, the, the least entry Point, the barrier of entry that's basically accessible and we are offering uh, basically being able to build this for you uh, at no cost to give it to you to try out to kick the tires and then if it's something that you feel that can actually help your organization then we can look at engaging us as your partner to move forward to establish these so the qr code if you scan this qr code it would take you to a site where you can sign up for this it gives you some information on the sharepoint offer what we're going to be doing for you and then at that point you're able to sign up if once you do sign up one of our business development reps would contact you and then basically gather some information to start building your site for you and get it going so that we can actually get you down that road of actually start implementing these type of solutions and using them firsthand you've seen them we've talked about them in theory in our last presentation in this presentation you actually got to see the tools working um, in the environment that david was showing and the next step it would be try it out yourself you know kick the tires use it you know, no harm, no foul. If you, if it's not for you, that's fine. If it is for you, then we can definitely help, you know, build something further for you. Um, so with that said, David, any final words of wisdoms that you want to uh, share with us? Oh, you know me, I could keep going on about Microsoft and stuff. Oh, yes, you can. I will, yes, you can. <laughs> I will, I will let it rest at this point. And, and thank you everyone for your time. And thanks, Randy, for having me on. I appreciate it, David. Thank you. And thanks everybody. Again, take advantage of this offer, uh, scan that QR code, um, take a look at it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, go to our website. You can schedule a, a strategic business call with one of our business development folks. Um, again, it's, it's a business strategy call. It's not a sales call. We're not into that model of hard pressure sales. Everything we do is based on education and really imparting information so that you understand what's available for you out there. And if you talk to somebody, talk to me, talk to one of our business development reps, we basically are here to talk from a 
business to business standpoint. So one business talking to another and really trying to guide you down a path that may help your organization. And if it doesn't, that's fine too. But we definitely feel like these tools and these solutions are a way for us to uh, give back to the small and medium-sized business and even the large enterprises uh, to be able to provide a solution that can help your company move and embrace that modern workplace. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll be sending out the recording to everybody uh, regarding this video that signed up, and you'll be getting that so you can review it. You can share it with folks in your office, in your team, if you're an executive, an executive team member, and see if this is something that can fit the um, organization that you're working for, working with, or if you're a business owner, if something that can help your business. So again, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, weekend's showing up, so have a great weekend, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, David. Have a good one. I know, you too. Bye-bye.